you know, I had an epiphany. As I was going over, reviewing all the specs before Shadowlands, I realized it's about 24 hours before the end of October. And throughout this month, we have gotten our weekly routine balance patch for the beta. October 7th, 15th, 21st and 28th, we got the Shadowlands build 36165, 36206, 36294 and now the latest one 36401. You know, I can't make ratings, rankings, tier lists every single time Blizzard makes a change in the beta. That's what the beta is for, for constant changes. So I figured, why don't I just make a compilation, you know? A greatest hits of all the changes we have gotten in a month. I have a video for every single one of these class changes with more in detail spec by spec changes. The latest one was just a couple of days ago, but you know, some of you are lazy. Some of you just can't be bothered. I mean, all the videos together are probably one and a half hour worth of changes. So let's just make a compilation. We're going to make a video about the specs that have been nerfed the most in this past month and specs that have been buffed the most. Now, please realize, I know you will not like it, but remember that in the beta there are plenty of things that are brokenly overpowered. Please note that just because you get nerfed doesn't mean you're getting weakened as if you were playing in the live version this is beta some of the things were doing two three four five times the damage they were supposed to be doing so the nerf was warranted it was necessary okay so in this video we're going to go over the specs that have been nerfed the most another thing you have to take into account is that most of the changes in the beta have been towards a downtrend so they have been towards nerfing rather than buffing there are generally more nerfs than there are buffs most of the heavier hits in these compilations are going to be the nerfs, more so than the buffs. So, let's get going with our most nerfed specs. Now, we are going to start with the specs in order of magnitude of nerfs. Specs that make it in here have been nerfed quite a bit, but we're gonna start with the light ones. The first one in line is going to be Markmanship Hunter. Markmanship Hunter has gotten a few buffs throughout this entire month. The Secrets of the Unblinking Vigil Legendary has been strengthened when it comes to the single target and the priority damage on the primary target, thanks to changing the 50% chance of the Legendary, rather than not consuming your charge, is instead going to refund a charge of aim shot and make it free of cost of focus. This was a nice start, they also gotten another good start with Surging Shots being buffed in Rapid Fire Damage, another nice buff for single target however all of this is irrelevant and it plunges them into the most nerfed specs compilation because of serpent stalker's trickery which by this point i mentioned probably like in five or six different videos the deal with this legendary the original legendary used to make your aim shot consuming trick shot effect also shoot three arcane shots if you talented into chimera shot it also shot three chimera shots then it was nerfed down to two extra chimera shots instead of three then it was reverted back to three shots so all good right no because in the latest change in the latest balance patch that legendary has been completely erased and it's taken a new form now serpent stalker's trickery is simply going to make you shoot a serpent sting from your aim shot this is a massive nerf to the damage profile that Hunter was so good at in the beta, the marksmanship was so good in the, in the beta, the three target cleave and the sustained AoE, thanks to the ricochet effects of trick shots and the triple shot of Chimera shot. Now, this legendary is not terrible in and of itself, it's literally giving you a talent into a legendary. So it's, it's okay, it's also, you know, good for single target, sustained single target, but, you know, the loss of the previous legendary is just too big. You know, it's too big to not make it in here. And it stings more because that damage profile, the three target cleave, the sustained three target and AoE damage on five to six targets was your strongest point. So it hurts more when your strongest point gets hit. So Markmanship Hunter ends up in here because of this change almost alone. We can also add to this uh, strong point for Markmanship the fact that the Conduit, Deadly Chain, is also nerfed, meaning the ricochet damage of trick shots has also been nerfed by 50% in the conduit itself, not the overall damage, just the conduit damage, which is also a slightly annoying nerf. Now, the next one. Now, Demon Hunter is here because of a legendary and because of a talent. But first, let's go over the Glass Al full compartment of Havoc Demon Hunter. Chaos Theory is their new legendary, which has gotten buffed from the original iteration of a week ago. Now it is much better, it is much stronger. Very good for single target, very good for priority damage on single target, so that's nice. However, 
we've got some bad news. Fat Bombardment was their standout legendary before this. Fat Bombardment used to have Immolation Aura stack the damage of your Troglave by 20%, stacking up 5 times, meaning you would double the damage on your Troglave and Per stack, you would also hit an additional target, meaning at max stacks, at 5 stacks, you would be hitting targets for double the damage of your Troglave, plus the ricochet of your Troglave, since, you know, Troglave ricochets to two extra targets. The change was that now the extra damage was only on your primary target. So even if you hit 5 targets, the 100% more damage only affected the first Troglave. The other 4 were basic shitty damage. It was slightly buffed, because now the damage increase is 50% instead of 20, but it is still just on the primary target. It is no longer AoE. This legendary has now gone to being better for priority damage, because now you, you can do 250% more Troglave damage on your primary target, but heavily nerfed in AoE and cleave. But the real hit, obviously, is Unbound Chaos. Demon Hunter was the star of very heavy burst AoE, thanks to the new talent Unbound Chaos, which would massively empower your next fell rush after using Immolation Aura. You would have a Demon Hunter copy charge in the location of your fell rush, doing 275% attack power scaling damage in AoE, which was massive. The buff from this talent would also have permanent effect on you. It didn't have a timer, meaning you could Immolation Aura, wait for Immolation Aura cooldown to, to reset, for example, between one pack and the next in Mythic Plus, and then you could fell rush in, for the Unbound Chaos Explosion, reuse Immolation Aura, Vengeful Retreat back, Fell Rush in again, and have two very powerful back-to-back -back explosion of this talent. There has been a rework, unfortunately. Blizzard has posted a note as to why they weren't satisfied with this, and instead now they changed it to be awful. Now, Unbound Chaos is simply going to empower the next Fell Rush damage by 300%. The problem is that the base damage of Fell Rush is 25% of your attack power. So, increasing this by 300%, is garbage. It's about a fifth, a fourth to a fifth of the damage of Unbound Chaos did previously. So, similar to Marksmanship Hunter, Havoc essentially ends here almost exclusively because of this heavy, heavy nerf to Unbound Chaos, because of how powerful it was before. Now we go for a quick and easy spec, which is Protection Paladin. Protection Paladin hasn't really been nerfed heavily when it comes to tankiness and survivability. As a matter of fact, they have barely been touched there. The real change is going to be their damage. So, it doesn't really touch them too much, particularly for raid encounters, but for Mythic Plus, where damage coming from tanks is extremely relevant, this hurts a lot. First, they have gotten two of their legendaries nerfed when it comes to damage. Bulwark of the Righteous Fury used to increase the damage of your next Shield of the Righteous per enemies hit by Avengers Shield. Now, this didn't have a cap. You had quite a few different ways to reset the cooldown of your Avengers Shield, meaning you could hit multiple times multiple targets and have massive increase in damage on your Shield of the Righteous. The legendary change made it cap at 5 targets. So, it was much less damage, particularly in those bigger Mythic Plus pools. The next nerf was 2 Holy Avengers and Grave Sigil, from 50% chance to reset the cooldown of Avengers Shield to 35%. So, from 1 in 2 to 1 in 3. Another pretty bad nerf for Mythic Plus again. A bigger, an even bigger nerf came from their Conduit, because their Conduit is not a legendary. You don't have to choose one or the other, it was much easier to just slot this in your Conduit slot. Vengeful Shock. Vengeful Shock used to increase the holy damage you dealt to the target by 15% for 5 seconds after using Avenger Shield, which meant an extremely high uptime in Mythic Plus, and now it went from 15% to 3. The scaling was also nerfed similarly, one-fifth. The scaling went from 15% at rank 1 to 45% at max rank, and now it's 3% at rank 1 and 7.2% at max rank. So, heavy heavy nerfs when it comes to damage for Protection Paladin. Alright, now we are in the podium, the last three. The three specs that have been brutalized the most this past month in October. We are starting with Outlook, because if you have watched my class changes videos, you know that um, Rogue as a whole has not had a good October, man. Not very good. So, Outlaw, let's start with the legendaries, because during the legendary tuning of a couple of weeks ago, their two strongest legendaries were nerfed, and the other minor legendaries weren't even buffed, and they weren't that good to begin with, even if they were buffed. These two were the key ones. Celerity used to increase your damage within Adrenaline Rush by 15%, and have a chance to randomly proc Adrenaline Rush while you have Slice and Dice active, which is pretty much all the time, for 4 seconds. It was previously nerfed massively to only increase the damage by 5%, 
and the duration down to 3 seconds and then it was slightly bumped up again, which still results in a nerf. Now the duration of the Adrenaline Rush proc is going to be 3 seconds instead of 4, and then the extra damage is going to be 10% instead of 15. This was already pretty bad, the real hitter, the real terrible nerf was to Guile Charm. Guile Charm was this fluctuating damage increase. The more you use Sinister Strike, the more you bumped up this damage until you reach 30%, and then it stayed at 30% for 15 seconds before resetting itself and starting again. Obviously, this was amazing for you to line up with Adrenaline Rush. You wait for 30%, you wait as you're hitting 30%, you get into Adrenaline Rush, and you get the full benefit of the buff. This was similar to their previous Legendary, as they have done with pretty much every Legendary, Massively nerfed at the start and then slightly buffed again, which still resulted in a nerf. The initial nerf was down to 8% extra damage and 10 seconds of duration, and then the buff brought it back to 10% extra damage. Still, it went from 15 seconds to 10 and from 30% damage to 10%. Heavy, heavy nerf. This is not all, because one of their strongest conduits was also nerfed, ambidexterity. Ambidexterity used to give you a 10% chance to strike with your mastery, main gauche, during Blade Flurry. So doing your strongest point, during your cleave and AoE, which is what Outlaw wants to do. The 10% was nerfed to 3%, and the scaling was nerfed by a similar percentage, about a third. From 10% at rank 1 to 24% at max rank, now it's 3% at rank 1, 7.2% at max rank. And the additional round of nerfs when it came to their burst and their AoE burst was to their Blade Flurry, since the active of Blade Flurry, you know, your abilities either are off the GCD and they don't have an immediate effect, or they are on the GCD but they have to have an impactful effect. This is Blizzard's mindset. They gave Blade Flurry a 120% AP scaling AoE effect when you enabled it, and that was nerfed down to 40%, a third. So, big nerfs for Outlaw around their burst damage, which was the strong point, around their cleave and AoE, which was the strong point. So, pretty hefty nerfs. Maybe Assassination managed to sneak out of this compilation, but Subtlety did not, which is ironic because you would expect from a sub rogue to be able to sneak away, but hell fucking no, Subtlety is going to take the second place in this compilation. Anyone who played the beta will probably know if sub is the second one, who is going to be the first one. Sub had some, you know, broken things in the beta everybody knew about. One, the primary one, the key one, was a carry soul fragment. So, Blizzard has gotten a rough month, actually month and a half, trying to balance this um, abomination. This uh, Legion artifact weapon passive, a carry soul fragment, initially, when first released in the beta, used to give you 100% shadow strike damage and combo point generation, two seconds later. Literally duplicating your shadow strike, which was obviously insane. Then the 100% damage became 50%. Then the 50% became 50% and no combo points. And then it became 15% and no combo points. It was just now slightly buffed from 15% to 25% and no combo point generation. But in the end, for now, it is going to go down to being one fourth of the damage it did previously and without combo point generation anymore. So this is significantly weaker compared to what it was before. And also, it hurts a lot because it, it was part of your strongest key thing as a sub rogue, which was your Shadow Dance window. Another part of your Shadow Dance window, which was very strong, was your conduit, your deeper daggers. Deeper daggers used to increase the damage of your shadow damage after using your eviscerate by 30%. Now it's been nerfed to only 8%. Yes, it now lasts for 8 seconds, so conveniently it's going to last for the entire duration of your Shadow Dance, but the damage has been reduced to less than a third. What's even more shocking is the scaling. I don't know what Blizzard was thinking initially, but Deeper Daggers was scaling from 30 to 150%, <laughs> and now it went to 8 and 19%. One of the biggest uh, scaling nerfs. Almost 7 times the nerf, basically. Oh, but that's not all. That's not all, because another one of your strongest conduits was Planned Execution. Planned Execution used to give you free 6% extra crit whenever you activate the Symbols of Death, it's been nerfed to 4%. And you're like, well, I mean, 4%, 6%, I mean, come on. Yeah, well, but the problem here is the scaling. The original scaling went from 6 to 34, the current scaling goes from 4 to 9.6. That's the nerf, not the base crit, it's the scaling. Last of the nerfs, still very annoying, Enveloping Shadows. You already have your base passive Deepening Shadows to reduce the cooldown of your Shadow Dance per combo point spent by 1 second, 
and Enveloping Shadows doubled this, with an extra second of cooldown reduction and it was nerfed to 0.5, so a 50% nerf. Very heavy nerf, considering Enveloping Shadows was broadly the most used talent for this, and also probably when you think about it, the reason why it was nerfed, since it was such a widespread choice in that row. But this concludes our sub-rogue compilation of nerfs, some very, very easily predictable nerfs, particularly Deeper Daggers and Carry Soul Fragment were a given. Now on to the number one. Come on now, is anyone really surprised that Frostmage takes our first spot for most nerf spec this past month? Anyone who played the beta has, <laughs> has had to deal with Frostmage, dealing about twice the damage of everybody else. And the weird thing is that the more they get nerfed, the more their damage stays the same. I'm really confused about that part, but let's go over the nerf first. So, the nerf roulette of Frostmage started with their two most used legendaries. Obviously, it's the beta. Blizzard sees these two legendaries being all over the place, so they get nerfed. Cold Front used to give you a free Frozen Orb whenever you casted 15 Frostbolts or Flurries. This was very quick, pretty much guaranteed uptime on Frozen Orb. So Blizzard said, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck your free Frozen Orb. Now you've got to cast 90 Frostbolts instead of 15. Now Blizzard came to their senses and lowered it a little bit. Now you only need 60 Frostbolts or Flurries to get your free Frozen Orb. This is more of a decent legendary now. But the real nerf of course was to Freezing Winds. Freezing Winds was an abomination before. It gave you a free Fingers of Frost every 2.5 seconds when Frozen Orb was active for your Mega Nuclear Strike Ice Lance. But the kicker of this legendary was that when Frozen Orb was on cooldown, Frostbolt was reducing its cooldown by 2.5 seconds, and this was completely removed. In return, it got a slight buff to the base effect, the previous effect, which is now giving you a free Fingers of Frost every 2 seconds. So whenever you Frozen Orb, you can basically alternate GCDs between Fingers of Frost, Ice Lance and something else, because of this legendary. Which is still very powerful, because of how hard Ice Lance is hitting. Now Blizzard also tried to fix that with fixing Ice Bite. So Ice Bite was another abomination. Uh, I don't know what Blizzard was thinking. Ice Bite was buffed at the start. Ice Bite increased the damage of your frozen enemies Ice Lance from 10% to 25% and it also slightly increased their scaling. More importantly for the beta, since you only have access to the first rank, it was the first rank that was bumped up the most from 10% to 25% the scaling then went all the way up to 60 instead of 50, so it wasn't that big. But the first rank was pretty high. Doing 25% more damage whenever you have your procs on frozen targets was very very high damage for Iceland, so Blizzard, similarly to Frozen Orb, said, you know what, fuck you. So they, they took Ice Bite and they went from 25% base damage to 4%, and the scaling went from 25 to 60, now is going to be 4% to 9.6%. As an additional nerf, they also nerfed another legendary Slick Ice, which wasn't really played anyways, but Slick Ice reduced the cast time of your Frostbolt by 5%, stacking up 10 times, so halving the cast time of your Frostbolt in Icy Veins. Now instead, it's going to reduce the cast time by 2% and the damage by 2%. So you went from 50% cast time reduction to 20% cast time reduction and 20% more damage. As I mentioned this before, when I went over this in the class changes video for that patch, this is bad, because what you want to do with Frostbolt is cast as many of them as possible. To proc your Fingers of Frost, to proc your Brain Fizz, to proc your Icicles from your Mastery. You don't care about the damage of your Frostbolt. So changing this legendary is pretty bad. It is likely going to be much stronger later on in the expansion, so that's a nerf. On a slight note, in this mountain of nerfs, let's just finish with a glass half full, you know, as a preview to the next video for the classes and specs with the most buffs, we can go over their only buff for Frostmage, Glacial Fragments. Now, Ice Lance, instead of having a 15% chance to blow up in AoE and having a 50% chance of blowing up inside of Blizzard, now it has a 20% base chance and a guaranteed chance to blow up in AoE inside Blizzard. And for the record, taking Splitting Ice and doubling your Ice Lances will actually make them blow up both of them, just to leave some hope to Frost Mages. When I say just to leave some hope, I'm being sarcastic. Frost Mage is still one of the strongest ranged DPS packs in the game, by the way, despite this um, very heavy nerfs. So take it easy, you're doing just fine. With this, we have concluded our list of most hit, negatively hit specs in this past month. As we go into November, the month of the release, apparently, 
surprisingly. And now in the next video, we will be going over the best changes, the more positive changes. So we're done here, guys. Time to migrate to another one of my videos. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, has anyone seen Shaman and Priest? Where are they? <laughs>